What's going on guys? It's Troy Dan here. Today on NBA 2K17, we have a challenge that involves shoes. Oh my god, shoes. Yes, we're going to be looking at basketball shoes today, but not the ones you probably want to wear. What are those? I will take 13 of the ugliest NBA signature shoes, put those players on a team, and see if we can win a game. And just before I show you my list, there are a few honorable mentions of players that are unfortunately not available in the game, but their shoes are too fucking ugly to ignore. Players like Stephen Marbury, who had an infamous $15 shoe called the Starberry. Ugh. Bryant Reeves, one of the more forgettable players who had an actual shoe deal with the Warner Brothers? And more recently, the Los Angeles Lakers' Lonzo Ball coming out with the Z02 at a retail price of over $1,000 fucking dollars! It's the most expensive shit I've ever seen. Who in the right mind would buy that If stuff? this video Fuck. gets over 1,000 likes, Troyden will buy overpriced Lonzo shoes. It's over $1,000! Yeah! Starting off in the 13th spot, this shoe belongs to a current reigning NBA champion. One half of the Splash br br That's an ugly shoe. That is a really ugly fucking shoe. This is called the KT2 Chase by Anta. This was made as some sort of playoff version. I don't know why they would make Clay Thompson a shoe. He wasn't even showing up in the playoffs, but that's another story altogether. I asked you guys on Twitter who had the ugliest shoe right now. Clay Thompson had the most votes out of everyone. I don't know, man. I just know I would never fucking wear that. It's ugly. Coming in at the number 12 spot, this shoe was released in 2011 for Kevin Love. Made by a Chinese company called 361 Degrees, you can see on this shoe it had the Love name on the tongue of it. Which means no one in their fucking mind is gonna buy it because nobody really wants a Kevin Love shoe in the first place. And let's just start with this company name. 361? 361 degrees. Is that it? Not, not 720? Not 900 degrees? Not 360? No. 361. That little extra degree. What the fuck does that mean? You know what? I'm just gonna forget it. It's a Chinese company. They probably don't even know what's going on. He look like a man. In 1996, Shaquille O'Neal wore these... Reebok Preachers to the Atlanta Olympic Games. Thankfully, it did not stop them from winning the gold medal, but Jesus Christ, this did not help them at all. This doesn't even look like a shoe to me. I don't even understand the design. For this, I'm using Shaquille O'Neal, which I'm pretty happy about because we have a 99 overall we're gonna take advantage of, but if you bought these shoes in 96, you were taken advantage of. For the number 10 spot, this shoe belongs to someone that most people consider the greatest power forward of all time. Released in 1998, Tim Duncan's Total Air Fomacit Max. That's the actual fucking name of these goddamn shoes. I don't know what the fuck this is. I guess Tim Duncan always known for not having the greatest personality. I guess that it tributes to this fucking god ugly shoe. You know what? I'm not the biggest sneakerhead, but I would rather climb a tree and hang myself than ever be caught wearing these motherfuckers in my entire life. Was that too harsh? I don't give a fuck. You do fucking nothing. Coming in at the ninth spot, this shoe was made by Reebok. It is called the Answer 9. Funny how that works out. Now, Allen Iverson had tons of great looking shoes, and in fact, I used to wear some Iversons back in the day as well. But I wouldn't be caught dead in this son of a bitch. This was released in 2006 and it looks more like a fucking ski boot than an actual shoe. Clunky, it's got those damn Velcro shapes. Is that a pump thing on the back? Avoid it at all costs. Will do. In 2004, Adidas released the T-Mac 4, which had a feature called the Hug Tightening System. See, this was a shoe without fucking laces. Apparently there was a screw inside and some tightening system, and that's how you're supposed to keep this son of a bitch on. But nobody wanted that. In fact, most people were confused what was going on. I don't know, man. It's not the prettiest shoe. The technology isn't there, but Tracy McGrady, he was, he was good in his time. I'm even using the Raptor version. Ugh. In the number seven spot, these shoes were made by Nike for Paul George. 
They called it the PG-1. Released in 2014 after his horrific leg injury, Nike decides to give him another funking L. What the fuck is this shit? They look like a goddamn space slipper. You know what, I kinda need some slippers and I really want Paul George to come to the Lakers, so I might buy this. Come on, we got Lonzo Ball, come on over. Have you talked to Kobe about coming to the Lakers? Not yet. Coming in at the number six spot, this shoe belongs to a Boston Celtic legend, Paul Pierce. See, Nike made him a Fomposit shoe called the P2. Am I saying that right? Fomposit? Who gives a fucking shit? Look at these some bitches. 2001 Celtics, plain and boring. Just like the fucking shoe. I guess they accomplished that. Starting off the number five, this player you might not even knew had a goddamn shoe deal. Now he is signed with Adidas, but before that, Joachim Noah was signed with a French company called Le Coq Sportif? Le Coq, is that the actual fucking name? They came out with this shoe called the Joachim 3.0 Tribe Leader, and that's a motherfucking disgusting pair of sneakers if I've ever seen one. Not only are they disgusting, they apparently were some of the most uncomfortable shoes to ever play basketball in. Some people blame these shoes for Joe Kim's injuries. I just want to fucking shoot myself. Calm down. You're not. In 1997, Glenn Rice took home the All-Star MVP award. And later on the year, he came out with the, ugh, Nautica competition shoes. Nautica? Am I saying that right? Who gives a fuck if I am? That's a dad shoe if I've ever seen one. Apparently even dads didn't want to wear that as they didn't sell too many pairs. I mean, this shit looks as appealing as sucking back a tube of toothpaste. I'm pissed. I'm way madder than I should be. And just in case you're wondering why I'm using Glenn Robinson instead of Glenn Rice, it's because there's not a single Glenn Rice on the auction house right now. And I don't have a Glenn Rice card, so... The closest thing I could find is this piece of shit bronze, Glenn Robinson III. Fuck it. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Coming in at the number three spot, this shoe was made by Dada for Latrell Sprewell. They called it the Dada Sprewell Spinner, and yes, that is a fucking spinning rim on it. Maybe it was just the culture at the time, but Jesus Christ, what were they thinking? I remember having G-Unit chains back in the day and they spun. I guess it's sort of the same fucking thing. Thankfully for Latrell, most people don't remember him for his shoes. They remember him for choking his fucking coach. <laughs> Stop Latrell. Stop Latrell. <laughs> Coming in at number two, we have another shoe made by Dada. This one for Chris Webber. They were called the C-Dubs. And as you can see, they're quite shiny. Unless you need a fucking mirror on your shoe, I don't see any reason you'd want to wear these. I mean, this could work for maybe a Halloween costume if you want to dress up as a fucking robot. I don't know what this fucking Dada company is, but they got some wild ass shoes. But not as wild as the ones I'm about to show you. Because the number one ugliest shoe belongs to a man that, well, has had great success in the shoe game. But when he was partnered with Adidas, this wasn't so fucking pleasant. In 2001, Adidas released the Kobe 2s, which thankfully were the last shoes Kobe had with them because apparently they gave no fucks. It looked like the DeLorean fucked an orthopedic cast. What in the fuck am I actually looking at? Are those shoes? Are those fucking shoes? They look like space shuttles. I kind of want to wear them because they're a Kobe shoe, but I know I'm going to get laughed at. People probably throw shit at me, so I'm probably going to avoid it. But motherfucking, what was you thinking? He's got toasters on his feet. That's ugly. <laughs> and of course, now we need to play someone. So I went online to play a random purse. Fuck. Okay, I didn't really have a point guard on the team beyond that Iverson card, so I figured it'd be a good idea to have Kobe there. This guy's got some diamonds, though. Let's see what his bench looks like. looks really good. He's got a really good bench. I'm kind of rusty. I haven't played in a minute, but I do have that 99 Shaquille O'Neal down low. That's going to be fun to play with. And here we go. Yep, in the wrong jerseys. Deal with it. It's not how I'm not gonna change him. Come on, Shaq. He played as a Celtic once. Here we go. Let's throw it in. Oh, Diesel! Diesel! D Diesel! 
Go, go, get, get, come on, get, what the fuck was he? These motherfuckers might have awful shoes, but they're playing good to start off. I like the way they said, look it, come on, good defense, Kevin, good, oh, there it is, that's the old Kevin Love, that's the Minnesota Kevin Love, where are you bang? Oh, and a Paul Pierce, oh, we'll take a foul at least. Look at that, Kobe, Jesus, that pass was almost off. In there, the shack, the diesel, the how the fuck did that fucking block me? That's impossible. That's not realistic. <laughs> Neither is that. Shaquille in his face. Sha Ooh, almost got a taste. I like it. Kobe, get that little Isaiah. Get that little Isaiah. If that goes in, that was gonna. That was gonna well, thank you. Go, Kobe. Kobe. Whoa. Uh -oh. Is he gonna jump? He's gonna jump. Throw it in the shack. Kobe to Shaq. Kobe to Clay Tom. Clay, get the fuck out of the way. Throw it up to Kobe. We got Kobe and Shaq. Kobe and Shaq. Kobe. Throw the alley. Throw the alley. Oh! <laughs> You just come. Let's go. We got some time. Going up to Joe Kim Noah at the buzzer. You goofy fuck. He got fouled. <laughs> guard him. Guard him. Block that. Block that. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's old school Noah there. McGrady. McGrady. T Mac. T, T crap. These shitty shoes are working. The trail spree. Well, Sir chokes a lot. Why'd you pass? Right there. Allen Iverson for three. What? The hell am I doing so well? Good fucking steal, AI. Good stuff, Alan. Alan on the break. Go for it. AI, the answer, the truth, everything is, is the answer. The truth is Paul Pierce. It's a rookie, AI. You can't. What were you thinking? You won't, so what Thank were you, you thinking again? again. Latrell Spree while moving it up. Go to the alley to Joe. No, not to Iris. Wow, that worked out very well. Kobe in the face of John Wall. Almost a backcourt there. Oh, Thank Paul you, Pierce coming out huge. Inside of Kobe. Mamba. Mamba. Green Mamba. Right there. Throw it to Chris. Christopher Weber with them ugly ass shoes. What? What? That was terrible. That was, that, that animation made no sense. And Thank you. Come again. Do just... try again. Try again, Chris. There you go. Persistence is key, kids. Good defense. Good defense. Good def. What in the fruity pebbles was that? Fake it. That's McGrady. That's McGrady. Oh, pass it to Noah. Alien dunk. Alien jam. I have Paul George out here as the point guard. I don't know. Kobe wants some rice. I'm not going to argue. He's the Mamba. Let's find out. Oh, that was a bad. Oh, cut Shaq. Keep Shaq, Shaq. Oh, we're going to be all right. Shaq, all alone. The Diesel. The Diesel. Coming into the fourth with a fresh Kobe. He's gone. He's a <laughs> You suck, sir. You fucking shitty defense. Kobe already got again. Kobe popped the three from Limitless. Such a savage he is. Kobe, 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 Kobe running. Kobe. Oh, again, again. Could he? Woo! Yes, fucking do nothing. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. We got fucking Kobe McGregor out here. Let's go. Kobe McGregor. Kobe McGregor. <laughs> this is beautiful. Good D. Oh, Paul Pierce with a steal. Everything. Let's get Shaq at three. Let's get Shaq at three. Everything's cooking. Send me the screen, someone. Fuck it. I don't need a screen. I'm Shaq. I thought that was gonna go away. We gotta hit it. Stop guarding me, you fucking bitch. Stop fucking. Oh, fuck this shit. We're getting that three, and that's the last thing I'll ever do. Come on. Setting it up to Shaq. Let's get that three. Let's get that three. Shaq. Oh, one on one. You gonna back off? I'm gonna take it. Here we go. Limitless Shaquille. Oh, fuck it. Oh, wait, another try. Dust yourself off and try again. That was Aaliyah. Get off me. Give me a screen. Give me a screen. And he screamed. Fucking China Man's on me. He's locking me down. You know what? Fuck this shit. Wide open. Clay Tom saying. That's how it's done. And with time winding down here in the fourth, we are taking a massive W here. A massive W, and I need to take a massive after this because I ate way too much caffeine for this. We played great today. We played very good. In fact, we were taking some crazy shots, and if it wasn't for that, we'd probably have even better stats than this. Kobe Bryant, 20 points in only 12 minutes, four assists, and five fucking steals. Thanks, buddy. Shaquille O'Neal, 14 points. Now, he did shoot 7 for 13, but that's because he took three three-point shots. We don't need to fucking worry about that stuff right now. Allen Iverson, 13 points in only 7 minutes. Paul Pierce got me 12. Kevin Love got me 10. And Chris Weber, 8 points in 7 minutes. We shot 57%. Again, would have been higher if we didn't shoot those threes with Shaquille. But you know what? Didn't fucking matter. He only shot 50%. Our offensive rebounds, we doubled him 10 to 5 and beat him on one in the defensive 17 to 16. He had four steals, I had 15. 15 fucking steals. He had 18 turnovers. What a fucking scrub he was. I only had six. 
and he never led for a single second. We had a 34-point lead. Holy mother funk. I thought it'd be rusty. I haven't played my team in a minute, but maybe I'm back. Maybe I am back and better than ever. Guys, thank you for watching. And as always, keep your stick on the ice.